at the beginning of the academic year. School districts and charter schools have a procedure to identify students who may be eligible for English Learner EL status. This is done through a two-step procedure. One, the student's home language is identified when the family completes the Minnesota language survey, which is done during the enrollment period. And two, the student's primary home language is not English. Whereas the student will take a language proficiency test. If the student is found to not be proficient, they are eligible for instruction from a licensed English as a second language or English language development, ESL slash ELD teacher. The Minnesota Learning English Ac Academic Proficiency and Success supports multilingual learners and their families by emphasizing multilingualism as an asset and encourages instruction in the home language in the development of English skills while retaining their home language skills across multiple modalities. Listening, speaking, reading, and writing. Students who show proficiency in their home language can also earn bilingual and multilingual seals when they reach high school. At the encouragement of families and the deaf community, the MDE staff looked at the recognition and inclusion of ASL as a home language in the state English learner identification and programming. This was effective starting with the 2021-2022 school year. These students are now screened for eligibility of EL status. Please do note that students who only use ASL in school but use English at home should not be screened for EL status. Those students who are identified as EL students are given opportunities for content-based instructional programs. The Individuals with Disabilities in the Education Act, IDEA, requires schools to evaluate students in their native language. Identified as the best language that shows what the child can do academically, developmentally, and functionally. Now, there are several questions that were brought up and we will answer them. Number one. Does this new procedure allow for hearing students of deaf parents or guardians to participate in EL services? Yes. Children whose home language is ASL may benefit from EL services. Students will be screened for EL status and if eligible, can be formally included and ELD instruction. Number two, what about students that come from a bilingual family? Parents, guardians use English and ASL. Please refer to the Minnesota Language Survey statement, of which you can visit the MDE English Learner Education website for further information. Number three, will the screener and access test be updated for accessibility? This is our first year with this and we are doing this on a case by case basis. 
we will need your help to identify where we have gaps. The Minnesota Assessment Procedures Manual outlines accommodations available for the various screening tests. Number four, why are we encouraging paper format for the screening tests? For English learners who are deaf or hard of hearing, using paper-based testing is not required but it is strongly recommended as an accommodation for several reasons, including the following. Ease of providing signed test directions and eliminating the need to force students to use oral listening skills. Test administrators are not allowed to mix formats. So, if paper-based testing is used for one portion of the assessment, it must be used for the full assessment. Number five, which deaf and hard of hearing DHH staff should collaborate with EL staff in determining EL status? See above for more information about this process. And in informing ELD programming, there are two teaching licenses available for teachers working with students who are deaf, hard of hearing in Minnesota. One is a deaf, hard of hearing license where the teacher has skills both in sign language and oral language. The other is the auditory oral license where the teacher does not have sign language skills and is limited to working only with students with a hearing difference who use oral language. Educational teams will need to include a DHH teacher who has sign language skills to assist with ASL discussions for students who are being considered for EL status. The DHH teacher and the EL teacher will need to work collaboratively to determine needs for these students. This will be determined by the student's individualized education program, IEP, or Section 504 plan. Six, what is the interpreter's role in the assessment? An interpreter can sign test logistics, directions, and practice items into ASL or another signed system. Translation of actual test items is not allowed. Seven, can you be more specific on the listening and speaking components? What is allowed and what is not? Students who cannot complete the listening and speaking tests on the WIDA screener should participate in the reading and writing portions of this ELP test. Deaf Students and English Learner Services, National Deaf Center, and Title III Non-Regulatory Guidance under the Every Student Succeeds Act, ESSA, the in-person human reader accommodation might be appropriate during the listening test for students who use speech readings as part of their communication system. Manually coded English supports, such as cued speech or finger spelling, the Rochester method, are allowed. Any other manually coded supports listed in the accessibility and accommodation supplement may be provided if used by the student in instruction. Eight, 
If the student is eligible for EL status, what happens next? The school then has some flexibility in deciding how to provide EL programming. The school will need to provide some form of direct ELD instruction if the student is reported in MARSS as EL eligible. A rigorous asset-based approach with a licensed ESL teacher providing content-based language instruction in all four domains with high expectations and direct links to grade level content area language expectations should be very helpful for eligible students. Nine, what are some ASL resources I could use to evaluate students in their native language? The following screen will show a list of possible ASL resources for you to use. Ten, what are some other resources that could help me? The following screen will show a list of available resources that may help you. Eleven, how can districts and charter schools get started to find out if they have students whose home language is ASL? English language development staff will partner with testing staff to view district data for students who report ASL as their home language. Staff should then confirm that these students have a Minnesota Language Survey, MNLS, on file in each student's cumulative folder, and that parent guardian indicated ASL for one or more of the four survey items. Keep in mind that a student whose home language is not ASL, who is learning ASL in school, should not be screened for potential English learner status. During school enrollment, all families complete the MNLL. Any student whose home language is a language other than English, including ASL, will take the WIDA screener to determine eligibility for English learner status and ELD instruction. For further information, including the statewide processes and information documents can be found by visiting the Minnesota Department of Education's EL website at You can contact for assistance with questions about EL identification and service here. Contact Mary Cashman Backen with questions about working with students who use ASL.